Okay, so I'm gonna try to teach you guys the basics of Figma in under 10 minutes. Now, obviously this is gonna go through a lot of the basics and most of everything that you need to know in order to get started in UI UX design. So this isn't really for someone that's already been through Figma or through Sketch. This is most definitely a really beginner course or a complete novice. So I won't waste any more time. Let's just jump right into Figma and I'll show you guys how to get started. Okay, so for this tutorial, we're gonna use a sample file that Figma can give us. So obviously this is what you first see when you open the app. Now obviously you're gonna have to download Figma or use it on the web browser. But I have it downloaded, so let's get right into it. So we wanna double click on the sample file here and I already have it open. So let's go over some of the basics in the navigation and some of the toolbars and the layers and what, what are we seeing here, right? What are we looking at? The first thing you need to take a look at is this panel here on the side. You have layers and assets. Every single little tab here that has an arrow signifies that there is a new frame or a new page, for example. You can either access this by clicking on it or double clicking it to change the name or arrow down to actually see what's inside. You can also do that if you can't find it by just clicking on the, I guess the name of the frame, right? So login page, we click it and now we see everything that comes down here. Okay, so once we click into that, we can then get started with some of the layers. Now, as we go deeper and deeper, we'll see that here we have some groups, a text, some shapes, and just pretty much everything that's on this page. So anything that appears on this page, you can find it through these layers. And if you can't find it, then I guarantee you're just not looking hard enough because it will be here. You just have to click through these little toggle tabs and it will appear. So absolutely every shape, every text, every color, everything is in these layers. Next is the assets. So sometimes you can choose to create components of the specific shapes, but we're not gonna get into that right now. We'll go into that later. Next is the top toolbar here. So what are we looking at here? So first up is this little section here. We click that and we see that we have move and scale. Move is to move around objects, pages, texts, everything, right? You use this tool to essentially place things around in your world. Next up is scale. So we're gonna use the shortcuts from here on out just because you need to get started with shortcuts to just get so much faster at the program. So next up is scale. So we click K and now we can scale things effectively, right? Because if we don't, this is what happens, right? It only increases the text box and not the actual size of it. Next up is the second icon, which is frame and slice. We're not gonna get into slice in this video, just frame. Frame is pretty self-explanatory. It creates new frames or new pages. So if you're doing a UI for an iPhone, you want to kind of draw out the, the shape of an iPhone, right? Now, obviously, if you want to get really specific with the exact size, which I guarantee you'll have to do, when you click F, all right, or click on frame, you can get all these different sizes. So we got iPhones, tablets, desktop, absolutely everything you need. So let's say if we want iPhone 11 Pro, click that, and it'll create a new frame. So that is the shape that you need for the iPhone 11 Pro X. Next up is the shapes. So we have rectangle, lines, arrows, ellipses, polygons, everything you need. Rectangles, you go from left to right or from right to left, wherever you want. And you essentially drag out the shape that you need. You can also create radii or radiuses when you click on these little circles here on the right. And if you only want to affect one of these radius, you go on to here on the right side and you click on independent corners and it goes one, two, three, four. So let's say we want to change the second, the second corner. Well, then we affect this number and it changes here on the, on the shape. If we want to change it back, we can either drag it out or just change zero the, the, the numbers. So that's all the shapes, right? Pretty basic. We can also use it in ellipse and we can use the shift key to kind of keep everything with the same aspect ratio. So we're going to do L which creates a line. Now here we can change all the colors and all the information. We're gonna go into pen tool and the pencil. Pen tool, if you've used Illustrator before, it's pretty similar to that. It's actually exactly like that. It's just basically a pen tool that you can change all the specific points and change their angles and how they're shaped and yeah, lots of fun. So next up is the pencil. The pencil has a little bit less control but when you let go, it kind of creates a much smoother line. So I don't know what cases you would want to use this, but know that it is there. Next up is the text, or you can click T for that. You click on it and it'll start typing from left to right. So we can start saying hello, and we click the escape key to get out of that typing situation. Then we have the hand. So if you are on a desktop and you only have a mouse, you can use the hand to kind of go around or use the H key to get into that shortcut. 
And then we have comments. So if you're working with, with a lot of people, you can pretty much leave comments here and there and say, give suggestions or give approvals or whatever it is you need to do. Okay, so that's pretty much that on the toolbar. Now on the right, we're gonna see everything that allows us to change how something looks. What I mean by that is if we click on the rectangle, for example, we can then get in here and change how things are aligned by clicking the, the top row. We can change where things are on the page by changing the X and Y axis. And we can obviously change the size of things by doing that. So if you wanted to center this, we would click the center here, which centers it vertically and center here, which centers it horizontally or sorry, the other way, ver horizontally and vertically confusing. And then again, we have the corners here. We can change the angle of things. And again, with the corners, if you want to change a very specific one, then we have next up it are layers. So if you've seen, if you've used Photoshop before, you know, all the layer passes such as normal multiply color burn, all of that, right? And when you use different color passes or different layer passes, it can change the way that some things look on your page, how dark colors are, how, how they're overlaid on top of other images or colors or texts. And it's a lot of fun to kind of play around with that. Next up is the stroke. So this kind of gives a border around the shape and you can obviously change what color you want. You can either use the hex codes, the RGBs, the, the CSS, anything you, you want. You can change the hex code to give it the proper color. You can give it a different transparency and you can increase the size of it however you want. You can also change whether the stroke or the border is inside of the shape in the center or on the outside. So that can drastically change kind of the size of things and how they actually look. Next up, we have effects. So if you want to give it, for example, a drop shadow, you can do that. If you, you can give it an inner shadow. So the shadow is now going to look like the sun is coming from above or there's a, uh, some sort of sunlight or something like that. You can also give this a, oh, you can also go to layer blur. So this will sort of blur the entire rectangle thing that we're looking at. And this will also include the stroke. So we can increase this. So now that that's a really blurry thing and this can kind of be used as a background maybe if we, if we want to or something like that. And one thing to know is that with the layers, however you move them, you will then kind of order the, the page, right? So if we change this shape to go all the way to the top, we see that it doesn't cover anything because it's in the wrong layer pass. So if you change it to normal, we'll see that it does cover it. And the layers are the layer passes and and how things are pretty confusing, but as you start to design more and get more into it, you can kind of figure things out a little bit. Okay, next up is the export tab. So this is pretty similar to Sketch, if you have used Sketch before, if not. Basically, it allows you to kind of export certain elements or screens. If you wanna export a few things together, you can select them at the same time using Shift and clicking that just selected all of them. You go here, export, and this will allow you to kind of have an image of those four things as a PNG, JPEG, as an SVG or a PDF. So that depends on maybe if you need to send it to your designer or your developer, something like that. Next up is the prototyping. So prototyping is really important in Figma. It's one of the most important tools in my opinion. So we're gonna use a really quick example, right? We're gonna click on the login page, which allows us to select the entire thing. Actually, no, we're gonna click on login, the button itself. We're gonna click on prototype and we're gonna move this to this page, right? So on click, we now know that when you click this or when you when you tap on it, it will move you to the next page. And that is what that arrow signifies. And here we have a couple of interaction differences that we can do. So we can change on click, we can change it to a drag, a hover, mouse, enter, a bunch of things. We can really customize it however you want to. And the navigation, you can change it to a scroll, a swap, a back, whatever, whatever it actually is. You can make it go backwards instead of frontwards, right? And then this is just the the, what page is it going to, right? What's the, the end navigation goal? So here we can see that it's the home frame or the, the page. And then here on the bottom, you have animations. So you can do dissolve, you can do uh, move in, move out, all these sort of CSS animations. And you can also get pretty, pretty creative with it. You have all these ease in animations, or you can kind of create your own. Now, this is really cool to get some really advanced looking things or some really specific looking designs. And here you have a little 
kind of preview of what the animation is going to look like. Now, this is something that's really, really helpful because not a lot of softwares actually have this. So we're just going to keep it with ease in and we can see how that's going to look like. So if we click on the play button here, you can see that if we click on the login or we hover above it, there is the mouse tap icon. So it, it signifies that there's something active here, right? So you can see that it doesn't have and now when we hover, it does. So we click and we can see how it kind of just animates into place. So we're going to go back from the, the, the actual preview and to the, to the home tab or where we were, where we were working, but we go back to the design and here we kind of see that there really isn't much to it, right? Another quick tool that I wanted to show and just some, some kind of just some shortcuts that are extremely valuable and can save you a lot of time is that if you have a lot of uh, layers through a page and you can't really get to it and you have to kind of go through all of these things and try to try to find which one you want. If you just hold command or control, if you're on a PC, you can kind of get to any little layer that you want, right? Here we can see that we're, we're literally just holding command and we can kind of hover over and just click on whatever we want. So maybe if we want to click on the rectangle itself, we click that instead of being able to being able to do that without it, right? So if we don't click anything, we can see that we have to go here, double click here, doesn't even allow us, right? We have to go through it. Another really important thing to use is command Y. Now this will show you everything that's on the page without colors and just as an outline. So this can show you if there's something beneath your actual layer. So say we put the, again, using command and kind of clicking through here, say that we put the login beneath that, right? Now, if we click command Y, we can see what's actually behind it and what we actually can't see without that feature, without that command. So that's pretty much Figma in a nutshell in hopefully under 10 minutes. Maybe it was a bit longer, but I mean, I don't know how long this is actually going to take to record, <laughs> but if this is, but if this video was helpful to you guys at all in any way, shape or form, then I would appreciate you guys hitting that like button or subscribing and doing all of that, leaving a comment on something that I missed maybe, or something that you have a question on. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.